October 1st, 1996, GM starts production of the C5 Corvette with its revolutionary LS1 V8. GM spent an estimated $1.2 billion to end up right back where they were before with a pushrod V8. Now, this was a risky move because their competition Ford were producing dual overhead cam engines, which were much more modern and more potent for their size. Even with this risky design decision, the LS engine ended up proving to be one of the most successful V8s we've ever had with over two decades of very variants between two different generations. Now, all good things don't have to come to an end. Sometimes they just need a little update. So in 2014, GM debuted the C7 Corvette with its all new LT1 V8. Both the LS and the LT share a 924 deck height, a 440 bore spacing, and the same head bolt pattern. But where they differ is the LT has direct injection fueling, has a variable two-stage oil pump, and also has a plus one millimeter larger head bolt. Even when you compare the most powerful factory LT to the most powerful factory LS, the LT obviously edges out. But more importantly than buying factory horsepower, how about building horsepower? So in this video, we're gonna see if the LS is better than the LT when it comes to building power. Now, when it comes to a successful build, it's all about the foundation. Now, when it comes to LS engines, you have a large amount of variance between the 4.8 and 5.3 blocks. You have the 6 liter block, the 6.2 liter block, and then the 7 liter LS7 block. Now, there's going to be variance between iron and aluminum. A lot of the iron blocks are going to be in the Vortex series. A lot of the aluminum blocks are going to be with the traditional LS engines. Now, when it comes to the LT variants, you really only have three, the 5.3, the 6.2, and you have the 6.6 .6 LAT that was just newly released. The only iron block out of all of them is the LAT. So the 5.3 and the 6.2 are all gonna be aluminum block. Now there's always gonna be a large debate when it comes to the power limits of the blocks. Now LT engines have gussets around the water jacket that LSs don't and they have larger head bolts. And this structure has allowed stock bottom in LT4 Z06s to run seven seconds in a quarter mile. That is impressive by any standard. Now the LS engines do have an advantage in this as well when it comes to the proliferation of these blocks and they've been, been produced for a, a longer period of time. So it's much easier to get your hands on an LS block and it's gonna be much cheaper to do so, which is a factor you have to look at whenever you are building something for a swap or if you wanna build your daily driver. Next thing to look at is cylinder head design. If you look at the LTs, they have a wider port on the intake versus the LS heads. Now this wider port has a larger amount of volume, but that doesn't always translate to flow. Um, the LS3s actually flow more and have larger valves, which are gonna be able to take advantage of naturally aspirated power. Well, then you may be asking, well, why don't LS3s make more horsepower than LT1s? Well, the simple answer is that LT1s run a higher compression ratio. They have a better flowing intake manifold. And then essentially what you have is also variable valve timing that LS3 doesn't. And essentially it degrees the cam so it makes more low end torque and mid range power and it, and it backs it off at the top end where you really don't need it. Now at this point you may think, hey, the LT engine isn't that bad and you just need more money to spend. But once you wanna start making large amounts of power, 800, 900, 1000, remember the internet says everything needs to make a thousand horsepower. Once you wanna make that type of power with an LT engine, you're gonna start running into some issues that the LS engines don't really have. So with LS engines, you have two main fuel upgrade points. You have your pump or pumps, if you have a ZL1 or CTSV, and then you have your injectors. Now with the LTs, with the direct injection system, you have your low side pump, you have your high side pump, and then also you have the direct injector themselves. Now the LT engine does have the advantage of with the direct injection system to stretch the fuel a little bit further if you do modify the engine, if you add a camshaft, headers, a, good, a nice intake on it. Yes, you can still use a stock fueling system. Now, once you wanna get into those high horsepower numbers like 800, 900, 1000, you have to start swapping out expensive things like the high pressure fuel pump. That can be near $2,000. The LT4 injectors, if you upgrade to LT4 injectors, those are $600 minimum. And then the 30% overs or the 60% overs can get as expensive as $4,000. Simply put, to push an LT as far as you can with an LS, takes a lot more money. Now, when it comes to the reliability of the LS and LT platform, the active fuel management and displacement on demand is really a big Achilles heel to these engines. Now, there's ways around it when it comes to LS engines because the displacement on demand or DOD wasn't introduced not until after 2007. So if you get any pre-2007 LS, you're not gonna have displacement on demand. Also, 
any true LS, a LS1, LS2, LS3, LS6, LS7, LS9 does not come with displacement on demand. Now in the LT engines, all LT engines have active fuel management, which is a rename of the same thing. Um, the only LT engines that don't have active fuel management are gonna be like the Halo car, the uh, C7ZR1, and then the HD L8T, which was in the 2500 gas engine, 6.6 .6 liter gas. Now the solution to this is to swap out the camshaft and valve train so you delete the active fuel management system. Now if you have an LT and you're shooting for a higher horsepower, you're automatically going to need to swap out that camshaft to one that has a higher fuel percentage on the lobe. Last but not least is going to be the swappability of the engine. Now already off rip, the LS engine has probably become one of the most popular swapping engines on the face of the planet. Between classics, European cars, JDM cars, literally you can swap an LS into your toaster if they have a kit for it. Now dimensionally, LS and LT engines are pretty much exactly the same. Now where the difference is, is when it comes to the accessories of the engine, making it work inside of that engine bay. LT engines don't have power steering pumps. They came in cars with electric steering. So when you wanna swap this into like a classic or something that had hydraulic power steering, you're gonna need to convert the drive system. Also, if you plan on swapping a supercharger into your LT engine, let's say the LT4 1.7 liter supercharger, there's different models of that supercharger. There's a wet sump system and a dry sump supercharger. So essentially, if you have an LT1, you're gonna need a wet sump supercharger so the belt routing can line up. If you buy a dry sump Z06 supercharger, you're gonna run into some issues that you may end up having to sell the blower because it's not compatible with your system. And I think the key here is that the aftermarket really hasn't developed a, like a one size fit all swap kit for the LT engines yet. Um, as more LT engines are starting to become more available, then the aftermarket is slowly transitioning towards supplying parts for swaps for these type of engines. As you even can see now, even Holly has a Terminator X full standalone system for LT engines. And now it doesn't control the 8L 90s and the 10L 90s, but essentially still, you can still swap a LT engine into your classic as long as you're decently resourceful in gathering parts. Now in conclusion, there's some key advantages of LS engines over LT engines. So number one is always gonna be the horsepower per dollar. It's gonna be much more expensive to modify the LT engines because you're working with more modern technology like direct injection, which is gonna be much more expensive to modify. Next is aftermarket support. Now the LT aftermarket is getting larger and larger and larger as these engines are starting to age, they're becoming readily available. But at the end of the day, you still can't beat the availability of LS engines when it comes to something as cheap as a 4.8 or 5.3, all the way up to crate engines that GM directly sells through them. Now, when it comes to reliability as well, LSs kind of have that advantage where it's older technology is not as complex. You don't have as many failure points in the fuel system, not as many failure points in the valve train, especially if you have a pre-2007 LS, and especially if you want to build a Gen 3 engine. But the Gen 4 LSs do have their issues with DOD. So yeah, it's depending on which LS you go after may be more beneficial in the re reliability aspect. And last but not least, the ability to swap it into an older vehicle. The LS is much more simple, so essentially those swaps that you wanna do in your backyard, DIY swaps are gonna happen much faster and much cheaper. Now, everybody has done LSs so much that seeing it LT swap is actually gonna have that allure factor to it. Now, since these engines are very closely related, I mean, it's very hard to pick one over the other, but I still lean towards the LS because it's just gonna be the king for horsepower per dollar. I mean, there's really no question about it. So. If there's any other comparisons you guys wanna see, hit up in the comments, 327 speed.